Welcome back, everybody, to the Toro Cigar Lounge podcast. I'm your host, Mike Glover, a.k.a. 757 Cigar Mike. Stay tuned today, ladies and gentlemen. You are not going to want to miss this episode. Today we're talking about what's it like to work in the cigar lounge. We'll be right back. In a world desperate to separate us by our differences, there's still a place where you can go where all are welcome. The Cigar Lounge. Welcome to the Toro Cigar Lounge podcast. Okay, and we're back. Again, I'm your host, Mike Glover, a.k.a. 757 Scar Mike. Today, I'm smoking the Espinosa 601. To my right, we have... My name is Ken. You can follow me at Ken Blue Smoke on Instagram, if you can find me. <laughs> and I am sm smoking a Vivalo, and this is a, a gift cigar from Robin, and who will introduce himself in a moment, but... I want to highlight the importance of gift cigars. When you find something that you like, it's it's a good idea and it's a great practice. And it's a good friend-making thing to be able to give someone a cigar. I love giving away cigars and I absolutely love getting cigars. It's awesome. And we'll pass the soapbox down to the far end. Hi, I'm Robin. Uh, I have a group that I meet with on Friday nights called the Brain Trust. Uh, it's a bunch of guys that get together on my back porch. been meeting for eight, nine years now, I guess. Uh, and it's all about um, just refining the art of hanging out. And to my immediate left. Lee Marsh, Stolen Throne Cigars. Well, welcome, everybody. And so today we're going to talk about, we want to primarily hit upon, what's it like to work in a cigar shop or cigar lounge? Now, all of us up here work in the cigar industry, but Lee, Lee have you ever worked in a shop? I have not. You've not worked in a shop. Okay. Nope. Ken, have you worked in a shop? I've worked in a private lounge, which is the one we are sitting in right now. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a private lounge. We do hold events here. We do have uh, Thursday night meetups here. Um, the Brain Trust has been welcomed and invited to, the, to that Thursday night. And likewise, you guys are welcome uh, And we've been place. invited to the Brain Trust. So, Robin, why don't we start with how? what in the world would possess you to go to work in a cigar shop? <laughs> uh, what happened there in your, the, with your life that, that you said, I got to go work in a cigar shop? Well, on my, my, uh, my last deployment, I'm retired Navy. I retired in 2012. Go Navy, beat Army. I started uh, getting into cigars. And uh, my first experience uh, in a cigar shop is I walked into Emerson's and uh, – uh, just wanted to pick out something nice. I was coming up from the uh, dime store cigars that you get, so I went into the cigar store, and for reference, my first two cigars were the um, uh, Arturo Fuente 858 Cameroon and the Oliva Series G Cameroon, which oh, I yeah. still love to this day. That was, uh, see, that would have been about 2009, 2010, so yeah, it was, it was a while back. Um, anyway, I used to go in there and hang out all the time. After I retired, uh, I stayed at home for a while. Um, actually, a couple years I was at home, and my wife used to throw me out of the house and tell me to go have a cigar because she was tired of me. Nice. So I Good hung job, out at Beth. <laughs> I hung out at Emerson's a lot, and uh, lo and behold, I got to know some of the people that worked there. Uh, one of the guys, Tom, I'd actually known him for oh, since probably the early the mid '90s, uh, and he was the one that went to bat for me to uh, to work at Emerson's. Tom is actually still a very close friend, and he's part of my uh, cigar group on Fridays. But uh, they just encouraged me to come to work for them. And at first it was kind of like, why are we going to hire this Harley riding hippie looking guy to come and work <laughs> in a cigar shop until I threw on a three piece suit and went in for my interview? And they said, OK, you're good. Uh, and I, I worked at Emerson's for about five years. You made and, and you made a shit ton of money over there, right? I wouldn't say a shit ton of money, but I definitely the silence said I it all. Definitely <laughs> smoked some really good cigars while I was there. The Sales silence is not said probably it. the place to, to make your fortune, but it is. There are wonderful perks that yeah. are associated. With um, that, though, right? You 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 make uh, uh, commissions while you're there, so that nice. was one of the nice things about it. And as a matter of fact, one of the commissions that I got, uh, we had a sales contest there in 2017, I think it was. And it was uh, for Camacho Cigars. Mm. And it was broken down into three tiers. Top tier was everybody who works full time. The second tier was anybody who worked 20 to 40 hours. And then the third tier was anybody who worked less than 15 hours. 
uh, and I won the center tier. And the center tier, the grand prize for all three tiers, actually, was a trip to Camp Camacho. Nice. Uh, so I got to go down to the cigar factory and, and uh, meet the people down there, really nice people, and got to smoke some really freaking amazing cigars. How many cigars did you have to sell to win that? I don't know, but I know that there was one particular guy that used to come in all the time and buy Camachos, and every time he came in the door, I, I just made immediately sure to tag him. Make sure to tag him. Yeah, I was Dibs. Like, <laughs> I was doing a Lawrence Taylor elbows yeah. to the yeah. other rep, yeah. pretty much, trying to get to this guy. He's mine. I mean, that's a hell of a that that is a hell of a grand. That is prize a, that right is a, a tremendous grand prize. That that is great, and I, I at some point in time we'll have to sit down and talk about that because it was definitely an experience. Uh, I think that's a whole podcast by itself. <laughs> I mean, th that's the thing I sort of think about from a little bit from the outside is that that those sorts of perks. And we were I've been watching on YouTube some of the people who have already answered this question. One of the things that they say is one of the bad side of working at a cigar shop is you got all these cigars that you want to smoke around you all the time. So. They end up buying more cigars than they would if they didn't smoke there because it's just there all the time. I well, see the that. nice thing about working there is you get a discount on the cigars. Ah, there you go. So, I mean, that helped. And so, I was smoking a lot of cigars when I worked there. I was smoking probably about 20 to 25 cigars a week. So, let me ask you this. In all, in all, in all fairness to, to everybody, yourself included, who's worked at a shop and maybe somebody who's thinking about working at a shop, were you working part time or full time? You were working part time, I think, because you were in a second tier on that contest. Right? Uh, at that part particular time, I I kind of wavered a little bit on my the number of hours I was putting in because of people coming and going, uh, employees. Right. Uh, at one point in time, I was working forty plus hours, and um, I didn't want to do that long term because I threw out my knees uh, working for when I was in the military, and okay. uh, it was just not a really good good thing for me to do that much. You but were also I, retired already. Right? Yeah. So. I was already so. retired from the, from the military. Uh, I I tended to stay right around twenty to twenty to thirty hours a week. Okay, so would you say the majority of the people that work in cigar shops in Hampton Roads are in, similar to you, retired, semi-retired, or younger? Uh, uh, what would you? How would you characterize the average cigar shop employee in Hampton Roads? I would have to say uh, mid 40s. Um, some of them are retired. Some of them still have another job. I know one of the guys that uh, that I used to work with over there, um, and he still works at, at Emerson. As a matter of fact, he only works a few hours a week, but he's retired from the military. He still has a full time job, and he works evenings and weekends at Emerson. So, uh, and he's mid 50s. That seems to be. About right. About yeah. right, right. There's, yeah. There seems to be this two distinct demographics that work in a in a cigar shop. Yeah. It's either a young kid. Yeah. Yep. Like early 20s. Yep. I don't want to say young kid, but yeah, early 20s. <laughs> and, I think uh, everyone up here can say young kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That early hurts 20s. me that you include me in that group, <laughs> but you're right. How old are you? I'm 35. Yeah, he's you're, one of the young pat, kids. Yeah, yeah. 35 yeah. officially one, puts you over. But I'm at that weird place when you say 20 years ago, I remember. That's, you're closer that's, to 50 than 20. Take it easy. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. But to the point is it's either like the younger, you know, early 20s or it is a retired person. Yeah. And I think that that's why you're constantly hearing this like cigar shop dilemma of like finding people, right? Because they can only pay so much. Right. Like, right. But let's, right. let's be honest. This isn't a job at, you know. T row price. Right? It's, like it's, it's essentially a minimum wage job. You might get a little bit more than that. I think I was averaging about ten bucks an hour when I when yeah. I left there. Uh, but it's it's close to a minimum wage job. But you're making commissions. Sure. And the commissions add up to it. And of course, you get the perks of getting the cigars. Of course, and, but it creates its own dynamics, right? Yeah. yeah. Because right. like someone like yourself, certain level of bullshit. See you guys later. I don't need yeah. this. I'm yeah. gonna go the fuck home. You know? like, <laughs> and it, and you know to the well, to, it, it it really didn't get to that point to me until COVID. Yeah. Uh, COVID was when I was starting to wrap up. Um, I just uh, didn't want to be in the retail environment and bring, you know, have that threat of bringing COVID home to my family. So that was of when course. I when I started calling it quits. You yeah. guys were open during COVID? Yeah. Yeah. It was no smoking in the store, but yeah, we were, we we're still open. Huh. You were you doing uh, drive up delivery or drive up service? No, no. People service? would come in. You have to mask up when you come oh, okay. in. 
So that's a that's a that's a good segue, right? What I what I really appreciated about the cigar industry during COVID is like the pluckiness of you know some of our shop owners and shop operators, right? Yeah. Because you had this distinct difference of like the people that complaining, oh, COVID's killing my business, and then you have these other guys that were going after it. Like we had shops that were doing deliveries, shops that were like. Finding ways to, you know, because people were still smoking. They were yeah. just smoking at home. We were we were actually doing really well uh, with the cigar sales. Uh, the thing about it is they're still smoking. They're going to smoke at home. They're going to smoke in the cigar yeah, shop. Yeah, you want to make sure they're buying from you. Yeah. So they're still coming in buying cigars from us. So, that, yeah. yeah, that wasn't really a thing. But what really did hurt us was the fact that we couldn't smoke in the store. Yeah, of I course. I mean, for me, being in the store for eight hours That's a day. a long-ass day. It was a long-ass day, and you can't smoke a cigar while you're in there, and you're around all these cigars, and you want to light one up, but, you you know, yeah, that was that was a thing. Yeah, I'm no good there. That was think. a safety issue? It was because of the health concern? It, you had to stay masked. Oh, because that's Because you had funny. customers coming in and out all day. Oh. Now, I remember Emerson's website saying a delivery was available too yeah they they did have delivery as, uh, uh, available yeah so okay i'd well, have to think all the smoke would have killed the covid anyway <laughs> <laughs> that's the way i sold that's it the, yeah <laughs> probably the healthiest dang thing you could do at the time was smoke a cigar yeah yeah we are not medical professionals. <laughs> this is not medical advice. <laughs> hey, we're filled with bad advice, but that's why you watch our show. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> if you watch our show, that's why. <laughs> Plenty of bad advice around here. <clears throat> so what advice would you give to someone who's sitting on a couch, they're sitting at home, Rob, and they're like, man, I really want to work in a cigar shop? Uh, try to learn as much as you can about cigars. I mean, there's. I, I was there for five years, and I still didn't learn everything about cigars. Um, by the way, I also had an opportunity to, to uh, study for the to become a, a uh, certified tobacconist. Oh, nice! Uh, unfortunately, what happened with that is I got studied up to the point of taking the exam, and the guy that was supposed to give the exams got sick and, and stopped. So I got right up to that point. Uh, so I'm just shy of being a certified tobacconist. But I also uh, was uh, given the opportunity because um, Emerson's a Davidoff retailer. Uh, I got hooked up with the Davidoff folks, and they had a certification of their own. Right. Oh. And I was able to get that, so I'm a certified Davidoff uh, right. tobacconist. I think it's only available to their retailers. It's too. only available yeah. to their retailers, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, they don't share the knowledge. Pardon my <laughs> forgetfulness. Don't. I'm a forgetful jerk. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> I got a question for you. I got a question okay. for you. So, what's the, so you're working at this cigar shop, mm -hmm. and a total noob comes in. And they want they want to be a part of this, you yeah, know. They're, sure. they're, it's a it's a it's a luxury item. They've seen some of their heroes do this. They there's want a to, cool factor. There's a the semi cool factor. <laughs> we, we always we always uh, tried to take the time with newer people that uh, weren't uh, cigar smokers to keep, teach them the proper etiquette for cigars. Like never, 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 ever mash out a cigar when you're done with it. It disrespects the person who rolled the cigar. Uh, and it starts to stink up the place yeah. after a few minutes. But, I mean, just things like that. We taught them how to cut and light a cigar properly. We get, get used to get guys coming in there, and they cut off the last inch of the cigar. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and we had a couple of young military guys, and the young military guys were funny to watch. Uh, a couple of guys came in, and they uh, bought the cigars. And then before the person that was selling them the cigars got a chance to show them how to cut them, these guys had stepped around the corner, taken a ballpoint pen and shoved it through the end of the cigar and completely <laughs> destroyed the cigar. Uh, so we take the time to show them how to, how to cut and light a cigar and then, you know, kind of teach them about etiquette. Uh, of course, one of the things is don't inhale the cigar. Or you turn green and throw up and we get to laugh at you. Um, but yeah, we, we tried to take the time to help people like that. So we, the you, whole idea was that we wanted them to enjoy the experience, and we wanted them to continue doing it. Well, that, that sounds like some great basics. How do you help them pick out their first cigar? Did you ever have that opportunity? Someone who's never had a cigar before but wanted to try a cigar, help me pick out my first cigar. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it was a, it was a fairly regular occurrence. Um, you kind of ask some questions that, that uh, will help them to kind of – point you in the right direction. Uh, one of the things that I would ask somebody is, what was the last thing you ate for dinner? Huh. Um, and, or, you know, what the last thing you ate, actually. And that would help me to decide what kind of cigar to give them. Um, and then for 
some of the people who had never smoked a cigar and, and had no idea where to start. I usually started them with one of the tried and true Romeo and Juliet 1875, um, uh, uh, Monte Cristo um, gold label. Uh, there's a bunch of cigars that I would recommend. Okay. Uh, well, we, one of the things they encouraged us to do when we first started there was pick out five mild, five medium, and five bold cigars that you would sm smoke at any time, your regular daily smokers, uh, one of them being an inexpensive cigar and one of them being a more expensive cigar, and uh, kind of go from there. So if somebody came in and they were looking for five medium or a couple of medium-bodied cigar recommendations, and you had a list that you could go by, and that list, it changed a little bit. It evolved as, I, as my smoking evolved, but uh, um, that was always where I used to start for recommending cigars. So I got one for you just off of that. Mm -hmm. I think we should all chime in on this a bit. And that is what, what, what do you think the, um, the – there's, there's very high-priced cigars and there's very low-priced cigars. And uh, the enjoyment of those is somewhere in between. And uh, what do you think about the – like did you try to upsell cigars or did you try to match somebody with like um, something in their – what you thought was their price range? Uh, I tried to get um, sell what was in their price range, but of course, upselling was also part of the deal. Uh, they wanted us to um, try to sell them, you know, sell them an extra cigar or whatever, right? Uh, br bring them up to a nicer cigar. So I usually started high and then gave them the option. Started high and then went down in price and then gave them the option of what kind of cigar they would like. Got it. Hmm. There's a. I think there's a. A big misnomer out there: the more expensive the cigar, the better the cigar. That that's one hundred percent true. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No, I mean the the inverse, right? Like it, right. It, it, yeah. I I think that and, it, and I've I've smoked some really really good inexpensive cigars, and I've smoked right. some really crap expensive cigars. Yeah, one hundred percent. One of the things is I am not a real big Cohiba guy. Uh, and I've smoked some expensive Cohibas, and I've smoked some inexpensive $5 sticks that I thought were better than Cohibas. So, I mean, that's not to say anything bad about Cohiba. It's just not to my taste. It is subjective. Yeah. It is. Yeah, right? it is 100%. I mean, but from a technical aspect, like, price is not indicative of the quality of the cigar. Amen. Now, I will say that it's more tied it's it's more parallel but like it's not indicative right right for that for for the higher price cigars you should expect a better quality tobacco yes, correct you should expect construction no construction draw. issues yes. no draw issues you should expect that from a higher but that doesn't necessarily you mean should, you're going to enjoy the flavor sadly better. you should expect fermented and processed tobacco too We're, but that's true, not always the case that's true <laughs> but what i will say too you have to understand that there this still in some circles is a status symbol, right? Mm -hmm. So there are people that are just buying cigars because of the price point of the cigars. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Oh, and well, yeah. We used to get people coming in and asking, for, you know, I just got paid. I want the most expensive cigar you got in the store. <laughs> yeah. And I won't tell you about some of the things that some of those people would do to those cigars. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure. But like, you know, sometimes like, and when we're talking about inclusiveness and education and stuff like that, like the one question that I get all the time is like, how do you respond to Cuban smokers? And it's like, well, I mean, you like what you like. Right. The best cigar is the one that you enjoy right, right? Yeah. what i will say is like the question that i always ask if you tell me that you only smoke cubans my question to you will be how do you know they're special if you don't smoke anything mm, else yep mm -hmm. what's so great about them yeah i think there well, is a little magic to cubans i uh, i had the opportunity to smoke some cubans when i was uh outside of the u.s and i think i wanted there to be magic and and i paid a act absolute premium for those cigars so i wanted i wanted more out of it and the time that i was smoking that that cuban i really appreciated it and i felt like i was participating in something that was are you you know history and whatnot. are you ready for this conversation maybe do, do, do want to do this conversation? <laughs> i can yeah, i can neither it. confirm nor no, deny that the cubans I, I can neither confirm nor deny that we're the in cubans i have in my cigar humidor yeah. were brought over on u.s u.s military hardware so. yeah so yeah. no i mean i i have cubans as well i smoke cuban yeah. tobacco i mean what i will tell you from a technical aspect there's one characteristic that can't be that cannot be duplicated when it comes to Cuban tobacco, and it is the saltiness of the tobacco. There is a saltiness to it. The, the, the closest cigar that I've ever had that's come close has been the Aladino Cameroon, hmm. right? What I will tell you 
is that the majority of what you're being sold as Cuban cigars now are not even predominantly Cuban tobacco anymore. Wow. Right. Yeah. Right. So they're sourcing from the Dominican and Honduras and stuff like that. So that, you know, you're paying all that exponential for the pomp and circumstance, right? Well, see, what I was told years ago is that uh, way, way back, a long time ago, I don't remember exactly what year it was, but uh, there was a blight that took out a lot of the Cuban crops and a lot of the really good tobacco that's supposed to be the magic stuff is actually long gone. It's just, uh, it was just destroyed by this um, ick. Uh, so the Cuban or the tobacco that's coming out of Dominican Republic and Nicaragua these days is actually much better than that level of, of cigar. So if you do find a really good Cuban, it's, it's kind of a rarity actually. There are some good Cubans out there, but the really good ones, I think they're long gone. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. But I think to your point where the reason that Nicaraguan tobacco and Dominican tobacco are surpassing them is because it's not it's not a, a government-ran money machine, right, right? right? So, like, you have farmers that are cultivating their talents and they're, they're taking time and, and aging and, and walking through processes. It's not rapid fire. Well, right? yeah. I've yeah. also heard that the Dominican Republic and Nicaragua have kept up with the agricultural Absolutely. Technology. Yes, absolutely. Where Cuba has not had that access to that information. Exactly, yeah. But they don't even have the time for it. Or the because time they're for trying it. to keep up with demand and they're just pushing yeah. stuff out. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And it's still illegal to own Cubans in the United States. It is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, there is well, the personal it's, it's, use, but that's yeah. subjective to whatever border <laughs> control agency. But, there's there's well, other things that fall into that category, that's too. That's actually because I, in, in March, I was in Jamaica uh, with my wife and I actually bought a box of Cubans. Um, and they were legit. I even, you know, I, I went through some due diligence. Even after I bought it, I was like, are these really Cumans? We totally believe Lee. And, and, yeah. Yep. So, uh, but I, I know, that's, a, know that's, a guy who's a tobacconist who used to work, Aaron, yeah. used to work at mm-hmm. Emerson's. And I sent him a picture and he said, take a picture of the cap. And I took a picture of the cap and sent it to him. He goes, those are genuine Cubans. Yeah. I said, okay, great. They were good. They weren't great. They didn't blow my socks off. They were good sticks for vacation mm-hmm. to sit on a beach with my wife and just enjoy the day. Yeah. But... Then I started kind of freaking out. I mean, if I got, I got to get these things back in the country. Nah. And so I, in, in all the reading that I did, um, and probably two full days of reading trying to figure this shit out, is there was a time when we lifted the trade embargo. Well, the, the, the trade embargo was never lifted. No. But they didn't. They, they did relaxed include the a, trade embargo for personal use. That's yes. Right. Yeah. But in 2019, it was closed again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. Personal use is closed again, yeah. but very rarely. I mean, it all it all it's all dependent. It on depends the, on who's yeah. You know, right. when, as you're coming through the gate, that's you right. worst case in, scenario, you're going to just hand them in, and the guards are going to have some great cigars. <laughs> you know, yeah, later right. that night, the TSA people that's are right. going to be loving it up. That you touched on another subject that uh, is is also a thing too. Is that you go to some countries, and if you're not careful about where you're buying the cigars from. What they'll do is they'll pick Dominican or Nicaraguan cigars off the shelf, take the band off of it, put another band on it, and sell it as a Cuban for yeah. a higher price. Yeah. So you got to watch out for that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of overseas horror so stories. Quote Jimmy Buffett was it a Jamaica mistake? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. They, I think I think I was good. All right. And I got I got a full box back in. Um, You're a pirate. I'm a pirate. I'm an nice. absolute pirate. I dig it. Um, and you were you were very free with your your cigars. I I got to smoke one. I enjoyed it. It wasn't as good as the one I had. Yeah, Jake got personally. some. Scotty got some. Everybody, I just gave them away. So there's no evidence. We're of it. I guess we're out. <laughs> we're, we're out. We're They're out long gone. Out. That was a, that was <laughs> like, March, likely story. That was in March, brother. <laughs> likely <laughs> story. Long gone. Likely story. <laughs> it's all right. No. <laughs> But it's a mess. It's a mess if you're going to try to, you know, it, I don't recommend it. I don't. But to Ken's point, I mean, the one thing that you have to remember is that, you know, situational awareness and like the situation you're in when you're having a cigar makes the cigar better. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Absolutely. You know, anything. I mean, I've had bourbons that way. I've had wines that way where I've revisited. I'm like, this is shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like yeah. I had it with my friends. We're bullshitting. Like we're having a good time. It was a great cigar. And you're time. like, this was awesome. Yeah, it was a great cigar. Just like Ken, you yeah. talked about, you know, gift cigars. It's the thought, right? Like I've had people and it's weird for me as a manufacturer where people still try to give me cigars. But um, 
it's the thought, right? It's so it's it's awesome. It's what it's all about. It's what it's always been about. You know, when I was just a consumer, we would always share cigars. Yeah. Always you bought a box, you want your friends to smoke mm-hmm. it. And uh even if they're not what you would normally smoke, it's a great cigar. I would yeah. so let me ask you a question, Lee. Uh, when someone gives you a cigar and they're all excited about it and they're like, man, I freaking love this cigar. I want to give it to Lee, see what he thinks about it. I'm sure that's happened to you many times. It has. What do you, what do you do? Uh, well, you know that I'm a brutally honest guy. So it, it varies, right? Like I've had manufacturer friends of mine that want my honest opinion, right? right. So in those scenarios you ask, I will provide it. But if someone's going to give me a gift, and it's happened multiple times where they don't know cigars, they were thinking of me in a moment, grabbed a cigar and gave it to me, mm-hmm. I tell them that's the best cigar I've had all day. <laughs> right? You know, because it's like you don't want to shit on someone's goodwill, right? Like right. the whole fact Absolutely. that in a moment they were thinking about me, I don't know why the fuck you would do that. <laughs> but uh, they were, and so, you know. But there are scenarios where people want my honest feedback. Oh, on, okay blends and all this kind of stuff like that and i have and in those scenarios i feel like i have no choice so there's a slightly different situation for you robin you're probably the guy who who people are like oh robin knows all about cigars you get the same situation someone says hey robin what do you think of this cigar what do you end up uh, doing i there? tend to be gracious forthright and magnanimous about it and right. you know be nice and you know be complimentive about it and if it's not to my liking i just simply say it's it wasn't really to my liking hmm. um but you know i I always try to find something nice to say about the cigar in any in any way. Now there is a one or two friends of mine, Chris. If you're watching this, I'm talking about you. I'll tell him, tell that asshole it's fucked up cigar. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one, the one that you gave me, oh man, this one, this one is nice. Uh, I really like the the way it goes. It's a right there in the middle. It's like what I expect from a cigar. It's not too heavy, and it's giving me great smoke, even though it's kind of tiny. I, I tend to like a, a bigger gauge cigar, but it's it's more of a Lancero. And the nice thing about Lancero if is if it's is not you get, a ten one hundred, he won't <laughs> smoke it. <laughs> it. It's more of a Lancero. So with those, you actually are getting a little bit more of the wrapper flavor on oh, it. Yeah. I think that was the intent of it. Uh, to me, those those are great medium bodied cigars that mm-hmm. I just really really enjoyed. It's kind of complex. But it, it's right there in the middle. It's not giving me any really strong flavors. Anything that I don't like, and it's giving me everything I do like. Yeah. So, Robin, getting back to working in a cigar shop, so you worked at Emerson's here locally, um, and normally we don't talk about lounges locally um, by name, but it's kind of hard not to when... When we have someone working, kidding, man. We mention cigar lounges all the time. I was actually offered a management position at another job, but it would have meant being full time, and it, I did. I again didn't want to do that, so right. I stuck at Emerson's. Okay, so what if you had to make one criticism of Emerson's lounge or shop? What would it be? Man, you're putting the guy on the spot. I am. <laughs> well, he doesn't work there anymore. Yeah. Fuck hey, him. Shit on your employer. No. <laughs> he doesn't work there anymore. Fuck him. The the thing about Emerson's is that the focus of the lounge seems to be on the TV. Yeah. And I like other lounges. There's another lounge here in, in the area that I really, really enjoy going to, and it's a huge lounge with a lot of seating in it. And it's the TVs, for the most part, are like – Behind you in, in a lot of those chairs. You can mention it. It's fine. We, we, uh, we can. Yeah, I know who you're talking I'm about. I'm talking about Burning Leaf. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's a good place. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but uh, yeah, Emerson's, the, the, the focus of that seems to be on the TV. And that's, uh, oh, no, it's, it, no. Uh, here's my I, only, I, want, comp- here's I my would only... rather have them put more chairs up against the walls and, you know, have more seating yeah. in there. Here's my complaint. Here's my only complaint against Emerson's uh, as a lounge in Hampton Roads. And this is for all of their stores. More seating, please. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you did that, you'd have a, a much happier clientele, I think. Well, let me just say for Emerson's. They have a freaking massive humidor, yeah, and, and it, it is. is comparable to anything I've ever been now, in. Now, have you guys ever been over to the Chesapeake store? Yes. Okay, the Chesapeake store actually has— That's the I best seating. Like, yeah, it's the best seating. It's the got about seat. 10, 10 seats in there. Yeah, we went over there for a Liga Pravada event. Yeah. Well, But again, they're pointed at the TV. So. Right. Yeah. You well, can, I think, you know, it's become like what we've all gravitated towards is that— that lounge experience that becomes like cheers, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like even, even for me as a manufacturer, we have a lounge in the headquarters and stuff like that, but I still 
occasionally we'll shoot over to Willie's or, or Magoo's or, or anywhere, you know, and you want that feel of being able just to see people. I, I found myself like, especially during COVID when we were like locked away mm-hmm. and like things started opening up, like I would go out of my way to see other people. Yep. So like, you know, take a day and just hang out at a lounge. Yeah, it's, it's, I, smoking a cigar is great, but it's always much better if you have somebody to share, share it with, you know, just sure. hang around and have a conversation. I won't go that crazy, Robin, but uh, sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes I, I, to be honest with you, I find it like it's kind of my downtime when I can sneak away at the office or at the house and have a cigar and just listen to a podcast or something, you know, Yeah, it's kind of like that quiet time but you're right i do like stare at your phone that's that's the shitty part like i'd say i'm gonna just listen to this podcast and i'm fucking around on my phone like a kid yeah, but now, you I know, actually like, get accused of that at the brain trust. There's one guy that uh, likes to accuse me of sitting here staring at my phone all the time and i'm not really doing that but, yeah. <laughs> but you're right i mean the camaraderie of it all yeah right mm-hmm. like oh we just did it last night fucking my daughter's godfather and i were up till two in the morning just watching fights and Smoking cigars and nice. shooting the shit, you know. Yeah. It's the little things, you know. As if, you know, coming through COVID, like life is fickle. Life like, uh, is fickle. Men need that community because we don't tend to build it on our own. And when we have something to do and we can get together, we tend we we do connect with each other yeah. when we're doing something like smoking cigars. We have those deeper conversations, yeah. and that's something that that. that well, in the case of the brain trust, it's we have absurd conversations. <laughs> Interesting conversations. Yes. <laughs> I'm, 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 let me, I'm going to say they're interesting conversations. So how do, okay, so let's talk about the brain trust a little bit because okay. we're, we're big into community. All the real cigar smokers, I think, are really big into community and the lounges and, and home clubs and even herfing online, right? Yeah. So how did the brain trust come about, Robin, and how the hell did that group of people get that name? Uh, as far as the name... Um it was actually my friend Chris that came up with the name for that, and it was no shit. Yeah, it was based on uh, just a bunch of guys together and uh, getting getting together and and coming up with strange ideas, uh, just thinking things out and uh, like the old the, the way that uh, people used to to uh, come up with laws back in the in the early days of the country, where you get a bunch of guys sitting together and getting drunk and and uh, coming up with all these interesting laws and ideas and things like that. Uh, we just got together and uh, just tried to think out of the box and you, just have some fun. It's a very eclectic group. It is a very I, eclectic I, from group. From my Actually, one time a, there. There's a running joke about it is that what, if you, what do you get if you have a Anglican priest, a Catholic priest, a Baptist, a Christian, a gay person, and an atheist hanging out in the same place at one time. We're called the Brain Trust. We meet in my house every Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> and there's shirts, man. You can't beat that. You guys yes, are in yes. like these badass that shirts. Was, that was actually my idea. Uh, if Once you become a vetted member of the Brain Trust, you get a bowling shirt. Um, it's a, a, a royal blue bowling shirt. And you have your you, everybody gets a call sign. You don't get to pick your own call sign. Your call sign not. is assigned to you. Of course not. And then you also have a rocker with the the <laughs> name of the. the we've actually Brain Trust has actually got several different locations, and each each location has its own name. There is a uh, California is the earthquake zone. There is the hidden city out in in uh, San, um, uh, Seattle. We got mo- one member out there, uh, or the underground city rather. Um, we've got um, Hurricane Alley. Which is Florida, and uh, we got one guy down there. We actually had one guy who was in in Spain for a while. He was out there for the military. He was the old country, and uh, my house is Ground Zero. Right, but everybody, um, all of those came from your house. Yes, right? all of them came from my house. Yeah, that's a real community right there. Yeah, and you're spreading out. Yeah, we we try to. I mean, w- what it is like I say, it's all about just getting together and, and having a good time and relaxing and. Uh, uh, sharing it with ever with other people so when somebody you know we've got a lot of people that move because of the military uh the guy up at the boathouse chapter in chicago he's a teacher out of great lakes um he's starting a group out there and it's all about spreading out and you know challenging those people when they get to where they're going to start another group of their own out there and they're still an extended member of members of the brain trust so when it comes to voting on different things we always include them on it but uh yeah, it's 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 about spreading it out and and sharing the love. It's it's uh, it's a it's a community thing. Yeah, so absolutely. How how many total members do you have right now? Uh, Roughly, grand total of fifteen. 
Uh, and we have an uh, average of about 7 to 10 on a weekly basis. That's but just at your house. That's just at my house, yeah. Yeah. But the, the ones that are they're spread out, they're onesies and twosies, and they have their own groups that are getting together. But members of, of Ground Zero is about 15 people. Okay. Got it. Well, it's an awesome group. Uh, Ken and I have been there. Uh, Ken, Ken's been a couple of times. Yep. I've been once, and then a couple of those guys came over to our yep. uh, lounge here, our private lounge, and hung out for a night. Um, and they're really just some salt of the earth people, man. They're they're just great to get to know and hang out and have cigars with. And it's what cigar community is really all about. That's what start. It's what businesses start with too, because that was our founding principles. We wanted through this business to build communities with with other men, and and it's not to exclude women at all. But but women have a really a natural ability to to connect with each other and men don't and we have and to take down the sign that says no girls allowed no. <laughs> we've had uh, some, some people over at our place too uh, as a matter of fact my daughter whenever she comes back into town she sits out on the back porch and smokes with us too uh, but we have had some women to come out and they sit out there on the on the back porch and they get into the raunchy conversation your and, daughter uh, smokes cigars yes that my daughter is smokes freaking cigars. awesome just sitting um, out there in the back with one of the daughter. best times i ever had she used to live in chandler arizona and there were, she was about two blocks away from a place called uh what was the name of that place again i'll remember probably about 15 minutes after the podcast ends but uh yeah it was a lounge right right around the corner from where she lived and we sat out there one day and uh we were looking out over the valley smoking cigars and drinking beer together yeah, i saw know. that picture that That's was awesome. like the ideal situation for yeah, a father-daughter oh, relationship it was a beautiful right day there. too you hear that, Tierra? You hear that, Michelle? <laughs> Sammy? Gauntlet dropped. Three daughters. At least one of you could have a cigar with your old man. Mm, my, mine, mine can appreciate a cigar, but probably isn't really into smoking it. <laughs> that's awesome, though. Uh, that's, that's really cool, Robin. Well, listen, thanks so much, man, for coming and hanging out oh, with us on the podcast and sharing your experience working in a cigar shop. Lee, I got one more question before we wrap it up. You, how, I could probably can't even count how many different lounges you've been in. Oh, countless. In the country. Countless. Do you have. And out of the country. And out of the country. Do you have a favorite? Oh, man. Shoot, I was going to, wait, 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 wait. Do, why do you think about that? I want to do, b before we leave, let's do an un unpopular uh, opinion because we didn't do, we're going to start a new segment. Go ahead and. Continue to think, Lee. All right. Um, That's going to hurt. We're going to start a new segment about our comments on this podcast. <laughs> and we didn't, we, we wanted to launch it here. Oh, here we go. But we, did, we weren't prepared. Here we go. We get some awesome comments on this podcast. And we're going to start, we, we're getting roasted. We're getting absolutely roasted in the comments. And we're going to appreciate those good roasts because we love a good roast. <laughs> and we're going to roast them right back. But I want to do an unpopular opinion where we all just give an unpopular opinion. I'm sorry. Now, what was the question, Billy? Uh, my favorite lounges. Favorite lounge. So, I, you know, man, internationally for sure, um, I had one of the coolest experiences. When I was in Bahrain. The Ritz-Carlton in the Bahrain has— uh, That's not even a real place. It, it is. <laughs> It is a real place. <laughs> yeah, I can, like, can, can, can confirm. That That is such a cool lounge because it's like you're going back in time. Like, it, no, let me say, let me preface this by saying you know, I was way underdressed as I, as, as <laughs> on brand for me. I had cargo shorts and a Johnny Cash Minute Finger t-shirt on. <laughs> There's this lovely lady doing, being a lounge singer. There's clawfoot sofas, fireplaces. It was awesome. Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, here, you know— I'm pretty sentimental. Like, you know, Dan's Lounge was my first lounge ever up in Baltimore. I grew up in that lounge. You know, we have Willie's here. We have Cigar Sessions. That's a really, really cool spot. If you're ever in Delaware. We got the Burning Leaf. The Burning Leaf. I actually haven't been there. You've not been to the Burning I Leaf? What been. the hell, man? That's our home lounge. And it's <laughs> shitty because it's right around the corner from our headquarters. It's uh, like I have not been there. It's like five minutes away. Um, and Leaf and Bean, you know, I, I'm a... Island Jim's a good friend of mine. His spot is the most eclectic spot you'll ever be. If you're if you're forced to go to Pittsburgh and uh, you need to burn a couple, yeah. leave and be in the strip. Is I awesome. will go there when I go watch the Pittsburgh Steelers win. When I mm -hmm. you know, when when I go to a football game there, I'll make it a point to swing in there. I'm out of here. The Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> what are you, what's your team? 
I'm a Baltimore Ravens man. I'm Baltimore Baltimore oh, Ravens. Oh fuck! I got to question our entire relationship now. No, I mean, man. hold on. You so wait a second. Wait, 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 Come on, no, man. So, I mean, everybody knows the, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens are one of the biggest rivalries in the NFL. It is. If not the biggest rivalry. Yeah, it's I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a one of respect. You yeah, know? And, it is. And I will, I will, you'll appreciate this. Uh, you know, you know that I, I had a football career and I actually paid college out in Pittsburgh. My Shout out to Rich, our equipment manager. He used to write Raven suck in my game pants. <laughs> <laughs> True story. True story. It's where the uh, most betting money is lost on those two teams in the entire country. Oh, it's a pick 'em game every time. <laughs> it is. It it's is. A pick it can game. go either way at any given day. Yeah. It really is. It's fun to watch. I used to work with a guy who was a Ravens, huge Ravens fan. And every Monday uh, after the Ravens would lose, I'd wear my Pittsburgh jersey into work. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Shout out, Matt. All right, guys. I think we're here. I think we're wrapped up. No, no, up. no. Wait, wait. What? What? Unpopular opinions. Unpopular opinion. Manufacturers in general, like we're talking about. <clears throat> Easy. They do a couple of manufacturer lounges. I don't know where he's going with this. I bet manufacturers don't do lounges well. I think the real lounges are the ones that are actual cigar shops. So you're talking popular opinion. So you're talking about like the Monte Cristo. Lounge. Monte Cristo in D.C. I went there. I enjoyed a cigar. It was jammed up with people. I enjoy the Burning Leaf but, better. But why would you go there? I mean, you have Shelly's back room. You have T.G. Cigar. You have a lot of. I went to have, George. Uh, I went Sybil. to Georgetown. Uh, I went to a couple of places. I, I expected more from Monte Cristo. That's just an unpopular opinion. That's all it is. So, unpopular opinion. So I've been to a couple of, not really a whole lot. I've only been to a couple of manufacturers' lounges. One of them was the Arturo Fuente Lounge in Las Vegas. And uh, the Casa nice thing. Fuente. Casa Fuente, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it was like the hotel was like a three minute walk from the hotel that I was staying in. But in order to get all the way across that dang shopping center was another oh, yeah. 20 minutes. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, and the place was actually really nice, but they tend to be, they were really expensive. I didn't make it to the Monte Cristo lounge, but I did go to the Davidoff lounge in Las Vegas. And that place is really nice. And they have a, I don't know if they still have it there, but they had a deal where uh, it was like you buy a cigar, you get a uh, a, a shot of um, twelve year Glenfiddich, and that nice. was that was a it was a nice deal. Yeah. You need to go to Leaf and Bean. <clears throat> it's like the perfect dive. They have great coffee, cigars. They they they're a good manufacturer lounge. Unpopular opinion. I don't have any unpopular opinions. You only follow the crowd. <laughs> I am the sheep of the group. You think what they tell you to think. All right, Lee, unpopular opinion. Everything that comes out of my mouth, I'm a walking unpopular opinion. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. If you catch our other bro uh, if you catch our last or future or I'm not sure where it's going to sit, if you catch our <laughs> podcast with Lee, he's filled with unpopular opinions. All right, Robin, unpopular opinion. I still tend to like the mom and pop places. Uh, there's one place up in, in Richmond that I really like. It's a, it's a combination lounge. Uh, they have dancing on Friday nights. They have food up there. They've got an incredible Cuban sandwich. Uh, it's nice. called Mona. Yeah, Mona. Uh, it's up in Short Pump. It's really nice. Mona's but nice. I tend to uh, like Mona's mom is and nice. Pop, mom and pop places. Mona's is nice. I like yeah. mom and pops. I, I do. I changed my mind. I do have an unpopular opinion. I don't believe it. I, I think that TVs should be outlawed in cigar lounges. That's terrible. That is a terrible opinion. Except on game days. All right. Uh, now nah, <laughs> yeah. I agree. Except night, except day. on game days. Uh, seriously, uh, you know, we went to the Griffin. Ken and I, we, we love to go out and explore lounges together. And We drove to Richmond. That was the same day I think we went to Mona's. Man, we went to a bunch of great lounges that day. In Richmond, yeah. And you guys we went hit to the Winston's Griffin. while you were up there? We did not go to Winston's, did we? Yeah, no. No, that was the only one we didn't. You guys got to go to win. So game day was was good for for having a TV in there, but uh, there was one guy used to come in Emerson's all the time, and he turned on I forget what show it is on on ESPN, and there's these two guys that just they like to just sit there and argue all the time. That's Pardon all that the show. Interruption. Is. Yeah, it's it's just one long argument. It's like, no. 
We were, I'm cool I, with the, I'm cool I'd, with I'd rather watch day. Lifetime. Honestly. I, we we were in a lounge. <laughs> in, that's ri- that's we deep. were in a lounge <laughs> in Virginia Beach. I, it was Norfolk. We were in a lounge in Norfolk on a Sunday. We're over there with Jake and Joao and a couple other boys over there, and some young kid um, came in, turned the TV on. Put it on some fucking space alien movie and crank the volume all the way up to sixty five. <laughs> you couldn't even have a conversation. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay. Like, I, I could take it or leave it, right? But I think that uh, obviously the idea is that, like I prefer conversation. Yeah. Uh, if I want to be by myself and quiet, I'm not going to yeah. go to a cigar lounge. Now, yeah. I'll also say that uh, there was one thing that I did that I was notorious for working at Emerson's on Memorial Day weekend. I'm a huge Indy 500 fan, and I would come in there early in the day, and I would put it on the channel that the, that the race is going to be on, and I'd hide the damn remote. <laughs> uh, so people had no choice to, to watch the Indy 500 during their during, – and that's the only I'm, – I'm not a sports guy at all. I'm a, that's I'm, a pro watch, tip right there. Yeah. Pro tip. Hide, hide the, the remote. remote. Hide the remote. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but generally, I mean, if it's sports-related or, you know, like, you know, Willie's usually – the we they, they always say they work in shifts. The first shift has probably like golf and like yep. some car auction, Meekum or something on, yep. and then then it'll switch to ESPN, and then the third shift they'll do whatever games are on that night. So like that's, I mean, I think that's fine, but I I don't think that it should inhibit you know the ability to have conversation. I yep. agree. Yep. As long as the TV's not uh, preventing conversation, if it's turned down to a reasonable volume, you can turn closed captions on. You can watch it if that's what you choose to do. But the point. Of, the best point of a scar lounge, in my opinion, is the conversation. The conversation. Yeah. yeah, sure, sure. Because I've met lifelong friends in, yeah. in cigar lounges that do they know? Yeah. Well, I hope. <laughs> well, I, I've been talking about my buddy Chris. I met him in Emerson's, and he and I have been best friends ever since then. Um, yeah. So yeah, it, it's it is all about the conversation. Well, and it's it's the power of the cigar, right? Like yep. It yep. has this weird romantic power to it. I mean, look at stolen throne cigars. Cigars are the everyone great, that works in our company. Cigars are the great equalizer. I mean, in Emerson's, we have one guy that comes in there all the time. I'm going to mention General Jackson. He's a great guy. <laughs> he's a two-star general. Uh, he's actually a uh, Army uh, National Guard general, but uh, he is just really cool. He's in there all the damn time. I think he lives right near there, and that's all he does. Is he? But he's. We call him Doctor Doctor General. He's actually got two doctorates, and he's a general. Uh, but he comes in there and hangs out all day long. And then you get these young kids, that are, you know, an E2, E3 in the military come walking in there. And they'll sit down and have a conversation with him. And he's tra- talking to them just like they're, you know, yeah. like Lee and me, uh, just having a great conversation. And you get people come in there that are big financial whizzes. Uh, I can mention a couple names for people like that. That come in there and they sit there and they talk to the guy who picks up your garbage. Yep. Uh, cigars are the great equalizer. And, and they I'll are. I mean, time. I always joke that I'm the king of the island of misfit toys. Yeah. Like yeah. everyone that works with yeah. Stolen Throne just showed up and never left. Yep. Yeah. Right? You kinda we look, all met. You kind of look like the lion. I, I, I feel <laughs> it. I feel it. But like Josh, Phil, like we met through cigars. Yeah. And you know, Josh has been with me since the first launch event, and basically told me I would need a restraining order, and he probably would still come around. So, it's awesome. It is. Lifelong friends and lounges, guys. Get out, visit a lounge, yep. make some friends. You need it, we need it. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up this week. It was a great conversation. Again, what it's like to work in a cigar lounge or visit a cigar lounge. Um, so we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, and share. As you know, we're constantly fighting the YouTube algorithm to get tobacco content pushed up and out to other people who might enjoy this content. So if you don't mind, please like, comment, and share. And other than that, guys, we hope you have a great week. Be a man. Smoke a cigar. God bless you all.